my junior posted sexy bed photos of my fiancé on social media. I was furious. She was indifferent. What does it matter to you? I said I would marry you, but I never said I would love you. She was certain that I would marry her and was confident in our family's arranged marriage. Until the Pure Campus Bell posted a wedding photo with me on social media, she went crazy and came to question me. I raised my ring finger with the wedding ring. What does it matter to you? You're not my wife. My junior Ida Makoto posted bed photos of my fiancé on social media. In a seaside house, she was wearing sexy pajamas, sleeping soundly. My friends were in an uproar, tagging me one after another. At George, is that your fiancé on the bed? This room costs 8800 a night. Only rich people can play like this. Who is her boyfriend? What's going on? Playing so wildly. I got the message and called her immediately. Unexpectedly, she was indifferent on the other end. What does it matter to you? Our wedding is still a year away. It's not your turn to control me yet. Besides, I only promised to marry you. I never said I would love you. Before I could respond, she hung up. Soon, my junior posted another photo. They were dressed scantily, his arm around my fiancé's waist, and his hand was positioned lower. Not visible in the photo, his eyes were full of pride. While Willow looked shy and flushed, her eyes gently gazing at Itumakoto. I immediately took off my engagement ring and sent a message. The wedding is off. I'll return the ring to you. Do whatever you want. Willow and I grew up together. Our families had arranged our marriage early on. I thought we were in love and perfectly matched. A win-win situation. But unexpectedly, she dated one guy after another. I used to think she just didn't want to be tied down by marriage so soon and wanted to force me to break off the engagement. Because I loved her. I was patient. But now, I suddenly wondered, what did she really think of me? Willow called with disdain in her voice, mocking. Is George throwing a tantrum, saying you won't marry? Did you ask your mom if she agrees? The anger in my heart burned. My words represent my family's decision. From now on, we'll never have anything to do with each other. Willow was stunned for a moment, seemingly not understanding. What nonsense are you talking about when I was with my ex-boyfriend? Didn't you even invite us to dinner? From beside her, Itumakoto's voice came, sneering, Oh, your fiancé is angry. He's too narrow-minded. Tell him we're just having fun. In the end, you'll still marry him. Fun? Are you planning to have fun in the bathroom or on the sofa? If you have a child, should I call him my son? Itumakoto continued calmly. Baby, aren't you going to apologize to George? I think he's really angry. I heard Willow's voice, intermittent and dazed. I have nothing to apologize for. I didn't do anything wrong. Look, he's not even talking. Forget it. Don't mind him. Let's continue. I felt disgusted and hung up decisively. I wandered aimlessly down the street, bought a few bottles of beer and sat by the riverside pour. My phone buzzed with many new messages. News about Willow had spread in our circle, and several friends were comforting me. George, where are you? Do you want us to come out and have a few drinks with you? I know about this. Itu Makoto seduced your fiancé. That guy is always scheming, just wants to hook up with rich girls. Seeing the name Willow made my heart ache. Fortunately, the gentle evening breeze from the river gradually calmed me down. I didn't know how much I drank. As the sky darkened, the boat started lighting up. Damn it, you damn bitch. Ah. Uh, no one can cheat on me three times and get away with it. No one. I crushed the beer can and roar, but the frustration inside me didn't lessen at all. My mind was on the verge of collapse, teetering between sanity and madness. George. Someone called my name. I looked up to see a pair of clear eyes. It was Maria, the most mysterious duty from our university. What was she doing here? The lights by the river outlined her delicate features, her long hair dancing in the wind. She smiled lightly. Have you been drinking? I coughed lightly, bending down to pick up the crushed can. No, I'm just playing with the cans. She watched me quietly, raising an eyebrow slightly. Don't lie, I heard everything. I didn't expect the aloof George to have such principles, setting a limit on being cheated on. I didn't speak. The silence was suffocating, each second feeling like a year. Don't you have manners? Eavesdropping on others. Hey. Why are you changing the subject? Seems like you're not doing well. 
David from the capital has been cheated on countless times, and you can't handle just a few. There was a faint smile in Maria's eyes as she lightly tapped my head. Looks like you're wearing the green hat again, it must have been the alcohol. I grabbed her wrist as she was about to pull away, staring straight at her. Maria, do you want to come to my place, for a drink? Our eyes met, and I saw a flicker of surprise in her eyes. This kind of invitation was clear between adults, she was the goddess, the unattainable dream of every man in our circle. There was no way she would agree, I must be crazy to do something so out of line. Just as I was about to apologize, she bit her lip lightly and whispered one word, okay. I was woken up by my phone. Decide me. Maria was still sleeping, her hand resting unconsciously on my chest, last night. I only remember pushing Maria against the door, kissing her slowly and passionately, she asked me. George, shouldn't we drink first, I think I replied. You are my drink, I'll start with you. Then everything became a blur. I squinted and answered the call. On the other end, Willow's commanding tone. Pick me up from the dorm in half an hour. I want to go shopping. I lowered my voice. What does your shopping have to do with me? Stop calling and bothering me. As I finished speaking, Maria frowned slightly and made a dissatisfied sound, seemingly disturbed by the nose, but this sensitive sound clearly reached Willow's ears, and her volume instantly increased. George, where are you? Is someone with you? How dare you? What business is it of yours? What does it matter to you? George, I really misjudged you. Over such a small thing, you, before she could finish her rant, I immediately hung up and turned off my phone. I pulled Maria closer again, gently kissed her forehead. I stretched my neck, thinking back to last night, it felt like a spring dream. My waist was still a bit sore. Maria was in the living room, wearing only one of my t-shirts, her lawn, slender legs gleaming white. I asked, do you have your ID with you? She looked at me a trace of confusion on her face. I leaned in and pulled her into my arms, inhaling the fresh scent of her hair. Her eyes widened slightly, her beautiful, clear eyes shimmering. I'll take you to get a card later, the kind that lets you drink at my place for a lifetime. I was completely sober now, my heart was pounding, beating faster and harder than ever before. An hour later, I walked out of the civil affairs office, holding Maria's hand in one hand and tightly gripping to raid booklets in the other. It's done. The legal kind. Maria met my gaze and smiled slightly. To be tricked into this so easily, it feels a bit unfair. What about our wedding? I couldn't help but laugh too, pulling her closer into my embrace. We'll make up for it. These days, Maria and I picked out wedding rings, tried on wedding dresses, and discussed wedding details with the planner. We watched the sunrise and sunset together, talked under the stars. We were surprisingly in sync, both wanting to have our wedding in the desert. So we started planning, we began to plan how to decorate the wedding venue. She quickly sketched out a scene on a blank piece of paper. Just then, my phone rang again. Hello, is this Mr. Wong? Your custom suit has arrived at the store. When will you be available to pick it up? I asked puzzled. What suit? There was a moment of hesitation on the other end before the explanation came. Miss Liu ordered a custom suit for you a few days ago. She left your number and said you would pick it up. I glanced at Maria, then covered the phone and walked to the balcony. I have no idea about this. Please contact Miss Liu directly. Don't call me again. Thank you. What was Willow up to? When did I ask her to order a suit for me? At that moment, Willow called again. Hey. George. Why haven't you contacted me for days? Stop being difficult. I spent a lot of money to get Mr. Hulk to design a suit for you personally. You should pick it up tomorrow. Then her tone turned impatient. Enough is enough. This weekend, our families are having dinner to discuss the wedding date. Don't give me a hard time. I was speechless. I am already married. I will inform my parents. I won't be picking up any suit. And stop calling me. I don't want my wife to overthink. Willow paused, then screamed, are you crazy? George, where did you get a wife? I know you're upset about Itu Makoto and me, but we were just fooling around. Everyone knows you're the one I'm going to marry. Once we're married, I'll be completely devoted to you and our family. You men don't understand the pain of that, do you? You should be more understanding and considerate, not so narrow-minded. Why are you so straight-laced? 
it's such a turn off. I could imagine Willow's animated and angry expression on the other end of the line. She had been spoiled since childhood, always used to being the center of attention, oblivious to others' feelings. The last time I'll ask you, are you serious? I'll say it at the dinner table then, and you'd better not regret it. Before she could finish, I hung up. Maria had walked over, deliberately drawing out her words. Oh, was that your fiancé on the phone? I wrapped my arm around her waist, laughing. Of course not, it was a spoiled girl's call. Family arrangements involve many factors. But don't worry, I'll explain everything soon. This weekend, I'll take you home to meet my parents. Maria nodded thoughtfully and said with confidence. Actually, marrying me will make your parents even happier. In the afternoon, I went to our usual hole-in-the-wall restaurant for a meal with my buddies. As soon as they saw me, they scrutinized me keenly. I feel like you've changed, one of them remarked. I smiled faintly and turned the wedding ring on my finger. I got married. What? You didn't actually marry Willow, did you? Man, sometimes I really admire your patience. He looked at me with pity in his eyes, not her. My wife's name is Maria. You scared me there for a second. Willow is just crazy. Just the other day, she rented out an entire bar to celebrate her one-month anniversary with E to Makoto, pop 88 bottles of champagne, and threw money around. You're her fiance, right? I really don't get what she's thinking. Wait, did you say your new wife is Maria? The goddess of our school. The aloof campus beauty Maria. Are you joking? I nodded dot dot seeing that he still didn't believe me. I smiled slightly and took out the marriage certificate. Godfather, how did you manage that? She's way better than Willow. Hey, Godfather, can you ask if she has any friends? After we finished eating, we walked and talked, analyzing Willow's odd behavior and unique thinking patterns. As we rounded a corner to the shopping plaza, our conversation was interrupted by a car horn. A sports car window rolled down, and Itu Makoto's profile appeared in our view. Next to him was Willow, her face flushed, sweat soaking her bangs into a messy state. My buddy and I exchanged glances, both knowing exactly what had just happened in the car. Itu Makoto twisted open a bottle of mineral water, downing half of it before saying, Willow, I told you your fiance couldn't handle it. Even in such a secluded place, he still came to spy on us. I was bewildered. First of all, how is the plaza a secluded spot? And what does he mean by me spying on them? Only then did I realize how well matched these two were. Willow's voice was hoarse, as if she hadn't recovered yet, and she said breathlessly, George, I knew you couldn't let go of me. If you want to make peace, it's not impossible. It depends on how you behave. Before I could respond, why buddy couldn't hold back and danged on the car door frame. Hey, Itu Makoto, can't you afford a hotel room? Are you really that broke? Also, my sister-in-law's name is Maria. You're only fit for someone like Willow, who my bro doesn't want. Willow's brow furrowed, anger flaring in her eyes. Shut up, who are you? Ha, huh? next time you make up a lie, at least make it believable. George, even if I gave you a hundred guts, you wouldn't dare be with another woman behind my back. I even personally picked up your custom suit. It's in the trunk, get it yourself. I've given you an out. Why don't you take it? Seeing her so angry, I couldn't help but laugh. When did I ever cheat on you with another woman? Who do you think you are? Thank you, Itu Makoto. You two crazies deserve each other. Don't ruin anyone else, Willow sneered. Fine, George, I've blocked you on all my contacts. If you come back begging, you're a coward. I replied impatiently. Fine, fine, I won't bother you anymore. You rat and the cat that stole the fish. A few days later, photos of Willow looking at houses with E2 Makoto were posted online. She was quickly recognized as the heiress of the Liu group. This had far greater implications than a social media post. I personally paid the blogger to put it on the trending list. Soon, it was in the top 10 keywords, and the comment section exploded. Wasn't Willow engaged to George of the Wan group? Who's the man in the photos? Could it be? She cheated. No. 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 Everyone at our university knows that Itu Makoto is Willow's boy toy. I can't believe she bought him a house. He's really hit the jackpot with a rich woman, 
if they still get married after this, I have to say that David's title as the green light warrior has to be handed over. Within an hour, my dad called me, his tone furious. What kind of trash did the Liu family raise? Break up with Willow immediately. To hell with the wedding. I must have been out of my mind. I'm calling a meeting right now to cut off all ties with the Liu family. What are they so smug about? If it weren't for my orders, old Liu wouldn't have lasted this long. You better shape up. If you go back to her, you're out of the Wang family. His words came so fast that I couldn't get a word in. By the time I tried to mention that I was already married, he had hung up. In the lab, Maria saw the news too. She directly posted a photo of our marriage certificate on social media. I didn't understand her move at first until an hour later when the online debate exploded. Oh my god, the little princess of the Shen family in Beijing got married, to George. No wonder Willow settled for a bow toe. She got dumped and lost control, ha <laughs> ha. The goddess got married so early, my youth is over. I'm exposing this, Willow had more than one bow friend in college, she had a whole pool of men fighting over her. She's the queen of hearts, a total player. I got home early, scrolling through my phone to choose food. I had no idea what my wife liked to eat, so I decided to buy a bit of everything. What she couldn't finish, I would eat, so nothing would go to waste. Just then, a missed call notification popped up it was from one of my dorm buddies. I returned the call, and he immediately started wailing, Godfather, save me. I've been captured by Willow and her 10 plus girlfriends, the scene is too seductive, I can't hold out, and gave away your new number. Before he finished, the phone was snatched away, and Willow's voice came through. It's me. George, you actually dared to block me. First, let my godson go. This brutal torture is inhumane. I can't watch him be tormented to the brink of collapse. In the background, I could hear my buddy's distant voice. Godfather, don't worry about me. I succumb under their threats and temptations. It's my failure. I'll accept any punishment. Don't be angry. Godfather, traitor you're not being punished. You're clinging to them. Willow suddenly screamed. Enough. Stop beating around the bush. George, I'm asking you one last time. Do you really want to break off our engagement? At that moment, the door opened, and Maria's stunning face appeared in my view, followed by her long, white, slender legs sexy and captivating. Just a glance was enough to make my blood surge. I stared in a daze, momentarily forgetting about the call. Darl, you're back, I said dumbly. Maria smiled brightly, sweetly responding, Honey, I'm home. The voice on the other end of the phone fell silent. A few seconds later, Willow burst into sobs. George, why are you still with her? I won't make trouble anymore. Why won't you come to comfort me? I never really planned to buy a house for Ito Makoto. It's because you wouldn't come to see me, so I deliberately had someone take those pictures to make you angry. My girlfriends told me to leave you alone for a few days and then act co to win you back. I've already kicked Itu Makoto out, can you come back? I sighed. Stop calling me from other people's phones, I don't want my wife to misunderstand. I was about to hang up when Maria took the phone from me. Willow, Maria, I remember you. I didn't expect you to come to Lujo and shamelessly become the other woman. Maria's lips curved into a slight smile, I'm now George's legal wife, and we're trying for a baby. Stop bothering my husband, or I'll make your whole family regret it. Got it. Little girl, you're lying. Willow's voice rose. George, let him answer the phone. I was mesmerized by Maria, carefully holding her other hand. Honey, don't worry about her. We. George, I'm coming to find you. We'll talk face to face. Maria ended the call and passionately responded to my kiss. One second. Our tongues were entwined in a storm of passion. The next, she bit down hard on my lip, her eyes narrow in question. Even she remembers me, but how could you forget? The wind whistled through the windows, raindrops leaving more and more marks. Fine and lawn. In the shower, I turned on the hot water, steam swirling around. In my mind, I recalled the summer Maria mentioned. It was during a middle school summer vacation when Willow and I went to Beijing. The Liu family spent a lot of money to meet one of Beijing's for young masters, David, renting out an entire hotel. In the hotel's rooftop garden, Willow got into an argument with a girl. They wouldn't back down, 
and the fight escalated. Willow lost her balance and nearly fell into the lake. Luckily, I pulled her back in time. The other girl, however, was pulled into the water by Willow. At that time, there were only three of us. The girl couldn't swim and was desperately struggling. Without hesitation, I prepared to jump in and save her. Willow grabbed my sleeve. Don't risk it. Let's go get the adults going back and forth. The girl in the water would probably be dead by then. I brushed her hand away and jumped in, pulling the girl out. By then, she had already passed out. I hurriedly performed CPR, and she coughed up water and came too. For some reason, Willow started crying, pointing at me and yelling. George, you actually pressed on her chest. Disgusting, I never want you again. Soon, adults gathered, bringing a doctor. Because of this incident, the Liu family gained a business opportunity. The girl wanted to thank me, but I was focused on appeasing Willow and missed meeting her. Who would have thought that girl would become my wife today? It wasn't a coincidence, I would never forget her walking toward me by the river. My heart racing at that moment, it was an inexplicable flutter, different from my protective feelings for Willow. Driven by alcohol, I asked an adult question. Thinking of her and everything about her, the scenes were played in slow motion, amazing. Frame by frame, the memories played over and over in my mind. After my shower, I walked out wrapped in a towel. Maria wore a silky, smooth nightgown, her wet hair draped over her shoulders, she was holding a hairdryer, and the whole room seemed covered in a layer of pheromones. So, honey, you repaid me for saving your life by marrying me. Maria turned off the hairdryer, her cheeks slightly flushed. You watched too many movies, George. Then why did you transfer to our school from Beijing and even choose my major? Maria bit her lip, about to speak when urgent knocking came from the door, getting louder. I frowned and opened the door in annoyance. Willow stood there, soaked, with three of her girlfriends behind her, panting. She looked inside, seriously watching me. George, I won't cause trouble anymore. Let's make up. Idu Makoto was just a momentary fling. He was in it for the money. There's no emotion between us. I've blocked him already. Her friends kept speaking up for her. I rubbed my temples. I'm really married. There's no chance for us. Maria walked over and wrapped her arm around mine. Willow's eyes instantly reddened. Her fists clenched, trembling slightly. Then divorce her. I don't care. I just want you, George. Maria smiled faintly, releasing my hand and leaning against the wall. Sure. George, you can choose whatever you want, it doesn't matter to me. Willow, sensing the mockery, raised her hand to strike, you can really act. Before the slap could land, I slammed the door shut with a bang, pulling Maria close. I pressed her against the door, prying her lips open, kissing her fiercely. She let out an instinctive whimper, her breath and moan scorching. The people outside seemed to hear something and kicked the door hard before leaving. After a while, I released her. Honey, the dessert hotel for our wedding is booked. When will you come with me to meet my parents? She didn't answer but asked, Do you like me? I nodded, planting a kiss on her forehead. Love you to death. Early the next morning, after seeing my wife off, Willow's mother called me. She said that Willow had caught a cold last night from the rain and had a fever of 55.5 degrees. She refused to go to the hospital or take any fever medicine. George. I knows you two are fighting, but if this continues, her health will suffer. Please come see her, she only listens to you. Auntie, if she has a fever of 55.5 degrees, there's no need for the hospital, you should be calling a hearse, not me. I hung up the phone and was ready to leave. But soon, Willow came in, leaning against the wall. George, I feel terrible. She looked pale, weakly leaning on the desk, wobbling as she walked, my buddy blocked her path. Stop. Don't play this game. You deserve better. Not my brother Wong who's the best. I shook my head helplessly. I've made it clear. What exactly do you want? She frowned, breathing heavily, finally speaking. Maria has been after you all along. The day after you saved her, she brought you a cake. I gave it to you, and you said it was terrible and wanted my cooking instead. Don't you remember? That annoying girl was Maria. She should have stayed in Beijing for school, a chose to come here. Maria has always been watching you, finding people to keep an eye on your every move. She knows everything you do, where you go, 
what you like, what research you do. With her scheming, don't you find it terrifying to be with her? So Maria had a crush on me all along. Hearing this, it felt like music playing in my heart. Hey, my wife is great, my buddy looked bewildered and asked, are you here to help him or win him back? Willow shot him a disdainful glance and continued, let's start over. George, I have limits with those people, the one I truly love has always been you. Take me to the hospital, please. I feel really awful, she was about to fall on me. I gave my buddy a look, and he reached out to catch her, Willow, about to collapse, suddenly straightened up, my buddy said. My brother Juan is married. You have no chance, how about considering me? At least in terms of looks, he reached out to support her. Willow pushed him away, a flash of disdain in her eyes. George, even if I faint in front of you now, will you still be indifferent? I didn't respond, took out my phone, and called Uncle Liu, also asking someone to get Itu Makoto. Soon, both arrived at the classroom door. Uncle Liu apologized to me, while hitting and kicking Itu Makoto. Willow, stop embarrassing yourself here, the Wan family has already allied with the Shen family. If you offend them further, our family is finished, let's go, Itu Makoto. Enduring the pain, helped Willow up, baby, don't be mad. Later we'll find a quiet place, and I'll count out to you. Willow yelled, get lost. She followed her father out of the classroom, glancing back at me every few steps. My buddy shook his head enviously, joking, Brother Wong, if your life were a movie, it should be called blossoming peach flowers everywhere, with so many beauties around you. I laughed, taking out my phone. Your point of envy is quite unique, I think you're really hungry. My buddy thoughtfully rubbed his chin then call it the turtle's adventure. I gave him a solid slap on the head, waving my phone. I sent you the wedding invitation. The wedding will be in the desert, and all expenses are covered. He joyfully raised his eyebrows. Really, godfather. Before long, Willow sent a photo. I never took off my engagement ring, not even for bathing or sleeping. What about you, such a crazy girl? So she kept the ring on even when playing with E to Makoto. I should thank her, besides, I had already returned my ring to her. I didn't reply, blocking her new number. Maria had arrived at the classroom, naturally taking my hand and leading me out. I heard Willow came to see you again? Yeah, she said, a little girl has had a crush on me. She looked at me intently, you know everything. I instinctively looked at her, noticing for the first time that her eyes were slightly red. I slid my arm around her waist gently pulling her close. She didn't say anything else, burying her head in my neck. I just feel lucky, if it weren't for you, I might never have known what love feels like. Maria seemed to breathe a sigh of relief, tightening her arms around me. The day before flying to the desert with my wife, I had morning tea with my in-laws, listening to them talk about Beijing's city planning. My buddy from the dorm suddenly called. I ignored the first call. Then the second, third, fourth, Finally, I answer. He was speaking rapidly, emotionally. Brother, watch the live stream. Your ex has gone crazy. She's finally lost it. Ha ha, confused. I stepped out of the room and opened the live stream. Willow was sitting on a seaside cliff, her legs dangling, pied to a large rock. There were people all around. In circles, afraid to approach her, a helicopter was hovering overhead. She held up her phone. Tears streaming down her face. I'm sorry. George. With each sentence, she edged closer to the cliff's edge. I was young and didn't understand love, but losing you felt like losing the whole world. If there's a next life, I won't be so willful. She was truly crazy. While I didn't expect it to come to this, I wasn't entirely surprised. I frowned, wanting to call her, but realized I had deleted her number. The Liu family was well known locally and she had been trending before. Now the comments were flooding in. So tragic, the struggle to win back love. If you love, love deeply. If not, let go completely. In this day and age, who still does something so drastic over love? This world has gone crazy, haha. <laughs> Uncle Liu called. I answered but said nothing, and neither did he. It must have been too embarrassing for him. After a couple of minutes of silence, I couldn't hold it in anymore. Uncle Liu. I know. I'll be there soon. His voice was hoarse as he said. Thank you. 
When I arrived, Willow was singing a children's song through her tears. She ignored everyone's pleas. She ignored the SWAT team hovering in the helicopter. She ignored the comments online. Aunt Lee was crying in desperation. Suddenly, she spotted me from a distance, stood up, and opened her arms. George, hug me. Everyone held their breath. I walked over step by step. As a child, she would always ask for a hug when she saw me, but she was an adult now. I knelt down to untie the rope from her feet, and she smiled brightly. I never planned to jump. I knew you'd come. She walked over, wanting to hug me. I held up my ring finger with the wedding ring. If you have something to say, keep your distance. My wife gets jealous, her eyes fixated on my ring, her gaze dimming as if a layer of dust had settled. Is Maria really that good? Just then, Itu Makoto, with a bruised tan swollen face, walked over. He looked down and pulled out a box from his pants. George, I was wrong. Willow took me to court because I secretly took the ring you returned. She's so unreasonable. We were so happy together, but she sued me just for stealing something worth tens of thousands, brother. Her values are all twisted. Please talk to her. Look, I'll kneel down and count out to you. He wiped his tears as he spoke and began to kneel and count out. I glanced at him, reflecting on everything that had happened lately. It felt like trying to put out a fire with a cup of water overwhelming and futile, he stammered. When she played with me, she said outright that she could never do that kind of thing with me. It was just for fun. She thinks I'm humorous and can make her happy, unlike you, always buried in the lab doing research. You're the most important to her. She listened to you. Please, brother, I'll count out to you again, okay? I was really fed up with this crazy pair. I retorted, dressed like that, with you two hugging. And you tell me you haven't done anything. Do you think I'm a fool? And in the car, both of you flushed and sweating. What were you doing? He, seriously kowtowing, replied. That was because the car's air conditioning was broken. I rubbed my temples and said, as long as you're happy. For some reason, Willow's emotion suddenly stabilized, and she said, missing out is only temporary. I believe one day you'll get tired of Maria, and then you'll come back to me, George. In the vast desert, an oasis was set up, and Maria and I walked down the red carpet, the entire scene was romantic and solemn, after exchanging rings. Maria carefully took out a gold chain with my initials engraved on it it was the necklace had lost. She put it on me. Finally, I can return this to you. Thank you. George, this necklace fell into the pool when you saved me. I saw it float up and took it. I've never had the chance to return it until now. I love you, husband. The next second, she stood on tiptoe. Gently caressed the back of my head, and slowly closed her eyes, her bright red lips kissed mine. The audience erupted in applause. The desert sun was scorching, not just the sun.